Today we're chasing Southern Snapper, soft plastic style. I'm here with Mads Grossel from Savage Gear, the brains behind all the lure designs you find in the range. He's come to check out just what the snapper fishing's like down south, just as we come in to the new season. So I wanted to put some plastics out there, and see just how they like them. Mads, you fish around the planet, great tip for people to start catching fish. Well, I'd say I'd, I'd rather spend 15 minutes fishing the right wreck or the right place than fishing two hours in the wrong place. So it's all about location, location, location. So find the fish, and then fish. Cool, and that's exactly what we've done here. We've used our sander, we've found some concentrations of bait, visible signs of arches, a few fish together. It's time to put some plastics into action. We know our snapper are opportunistic feeders. They love feeding on the prevalent bait supply, food supply at any given time. Mads, now the good news is in your range of lures, you're imitating so many of our great Aussie bait sources. This is the, the Manic Shrimp. So it's just a 3D scan of a real shrimp and it will actually swim like a shrimp. So these legs will actually move like on the real shrimp. You can rig it forward and backwards. You can imitate this backwards escape pattern or just that forward slow swim. Uh, so brilliant for both presentations where you're drifting your bait, you're actually fishing it more or less like a bait, your lure, or the more active way that where you're actually applying action and having the lure escape. Yep, and uh, another neat thing about your plastics, obviously they're built for movement, a lot of them. Uh, you've got some wonderful options in your curl tail grubs and stuff, or your paddle tail plastics as well. So for all you snapper guys out there, you love a really good imitation of your local bait and one that moves too, there's plenty to like here. When it comes to fishing your soft plastic lures, or any lures for that matter for snapper, there's two predominant approaches you can use, Meds. Here we very often drift, find the places where your fish are holding, then drift through them, either fishing ahead of the boat, sometimes even behind the boat, just working whatever lure you choose to make it look like a part of the food chain. If you're new to soft plastics and I want you to build your confidence in it, I'd say fish it very much like a bait. I see these very much as an advanced bait option. Fish it with an anchor out, the same way you'd normally fish your baits out here in these southern waters. Know where the fish are, feel free to get a burly trail going, and then cast them back so your lures are working through the burly trail. Keep a tight line, manage your lure all the way through. A lot of bites happen on as it's sinking, so tight line is really important to feel that bite go. Once it hits bottom, a few little jigs and work it back towards the boat. Just keep repeating that process until a fish come through and, and bite. I've there's so many ways you can fish soft plastic, you know that you fish around the planet. But I'd say if you're new to your soft plastics fishing, you want to catch a snapper, start like that, catch your first fish, and then your world's your oyster. Fishing snapper is all about finesse, and to do that, you've got to have the right gear. And with the Savage Gear guy, that's where we're talking about rods, reels, lines, and jig heads at the moment. To help us out, we're using lightly weighted, very sensitive outfits. Pick one in that four to eight kilo rod range, thread line in that 2,500, 3,000 size, load it up with 14 to 20 pound braids, a good starting point, and then leaders anywhere from 10 to 20 pound in a place like this, there's not too much structure for them to do on. And Mads, jig head's really important in the way that you present your soft plastic as well. Yeah, the weight of the jig head will help you with the fall rate. So I personally like a little bit heavier jig heads. I know that you fish them very light styles to get that natural, uh, that natural drift. Yep. Um, the gravity will actually pull that tail down and, and make it swim or escape towards the bottom. Um, and that's my preference is to fish them like something escaping. So I like a little bit heavier jig heads, but I saw you being very successful with the lighter jig heads. And um, so the weight of the jig head will actually give you the action on the lure. And a thing I noticed from a guy that designs these lures is whenever you put one on with a certain jig head weight, first thing you do is swim it in the water next to the boat so you see what the presentation's going to look like, you know how to put it into practice. Exactly. Putting it into practice, mate, I reckon it's time. Yep. You went and caught a snapper for us. So, this is one of the new curl tails uh, that we're going to try to develop for this snapper fishing, and which is that was basically the second cast. Just threw that over the wreck and took it on the drop about halfway down. Boom! Just fell that tad. It's nothing better than when a snap comes up and eats it on the on the drop. And obviously the benefit of a plastic that wiggles. You know, you can right, fish it both ways. Right there. I'll get a net. Thanks. Yes! yes. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Nigel. No worries. Oh, I love this. Oh, that's a good one too. Mads, welcome to lure fishing for snapper, Australian style. Mate, you, you design soft plastics and hard body lures for around the market. You're excited about the options in Australia. Yeah. I'd be excited too because this is one of our favourite sport fish, right up and down the east coast, south, west. We love love these fish. 
and you've got a lure which tempts them. You've got to be happy with that. I can tell you, this was so exciting. Second cast, and it just went boom. Oh, what an amazing fish.